We good to go? I, I will do that. Good evening. I'd like to call the order the April 15th, 2024 meeting of Oregon City Council's Committee of the Whole. The time is 7.05 p.m. If you'd all join me in standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, a nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Being a committee of the whole meeting, there is no requirement for attendance from council members. However, note that all council members are here and accounted for this evening. Also joining us this evening is Mayor Michael Safarian, City Administrator Joel Mazur, Clerk of Council Cassie Rawson, Law Director Melissa Perpora, Public Service Director Paul Roman, Chief of Police Brandon Began, Assistant Chief of Police Ryan Spangler, thank you, Fire Chief Clayton O'Brien, Assistant Chief Mark Mullins, Finance Director Nick Roman, and our Parks and Recreation Commissioner Tim Borden. That said, ladies and gentlemen, the first item of business for us this evening will be persons and delegations. We have one person signed in to speak this evening. Um, so I would ask Kay Corlett, am I saying that correctly? All right, we'll ask you to come forward. Please state your name and your address for the record. And if you need to, feel free to bend that mic down to you if you need to. We had tall people up before. They screw everything up for us short folks. That. So go right ahead when uh, you're ready. My name's Kay Corlett. I live at 1125 Precious in Oregon. First, I, I already sent Mr. Shrek. 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 <laughs> because of what he did on the corner of Pickle and Precious where that ugly house was forever. And I don't know how many of you or all of you were involved in that, but I'm so grateful that that place is cleaned up. I drive by it every day and just go, oh, my God. So I thank everyone. Um, anyway, I'm also the self-appointed cheerleader for the Oregon community. Uh, I feel a civic duty to build up our community as best I can and make it a better place to live. Um, and the main way I connect with people is on the Oregon community page, on Facebook, or Talk of Oregon. And I just want to let you know a little bit about what I do. I'll tell you my most popular posts, and I get a lot of likes and such, but I get a lot of, uh, oh, I also get a lot of um, nastiness. Um, but um, the first one I made was my summation of all the gathering of all of you at the Clay High when you did the question and answer thing before the election. And a lot of people thanked me for that, but they were also glad to get the information. I, I wasn't as um, complicated as you guys were, but I did my best and I'm always open to correction or whatever. Um, another thing I just did recently was find out why a lot of people were complaining about why they have so much scale built up in their water pipes. So I talked to the young lady or young woman at the uh, water division who connected me with some great uh, connections with the, I can't remember crap, uh, the people that, yeah, and um, Uh, the people in charge of keeping our water safe uh, that make all the rules, EPA. Okay, anyway, I got some good um, connections there, and I posted a link to um, a place where you can learn to clean out your own darn pipes. Anyway, so uh, I give out, I found a lot of information about the demographics of Oregon because I think people need to know who really lives here and how much money we make on average and all that kind of stuff. I uh, did a lot of research on companies who would or would not find Oregon a suitable place to do business. Um, and I posted a lot of that information that I found out. A lot of that's tied with the demographics of Oregon. Um, I like to let people know, I usually go out to lunch with somebody or a friend once in a while, and um, I like to let people know about the business around town that I've engaged with, including good experiences or places where I think they could improve. And I always like to talk to managers of those places who I have never once had a bad um, interaction with. So I like to put that out there that if you're not happy with a business here, please go to the manager and talk to them. And all the ones I know will do what they can to make it right. And the reason I do that is because people are always complaining there's nothing to do, there's no places to eat and all that. So I just think that's crazy. There's a lot of places here to eat. And I don't know why people don't go, but 
like I said, I'm a little cheerleader. Um, my favorite post was just recent. I asked everybody to send a card or post their support for Michelle, who was the woman who got uh, robbed, the postal carrier. Um, she got robbed at gunpoint. And um, I was, she was overwhelmed with the response of everybody uh, from Oregon. Because I, I think it's over 100 people that have liked or prayed or whatever for her. And um, she was, she contacted me and was so grateful and so, it made such an impression on her, what our community could do. And I think it made a good impression what kind of people we have here in Oregon, you know, so I was appreciate, I appreciated that. And as soon as she gets better, her and I are going to have lunch and I'm looking forward to that. Um, every single post I've posted, I have had to fight off negativity, including the one about Michelle. <laughs> So there are people out there that just want to fight, and I do my best to, I constantly tell them you can disagree, but you, you can't be so negative. You know, those are two different terms, and I make them, I sort of demand that they be respectful of me and other people on there. Um, but I also tell them that, uh, well, each of the naysayers, I tell them, okay, I heard you, but now give us a suggestion on how whatever you think might work. Or do you have any idea of what would be better? Um, then they put all those little laughy emojis after me, which I don't care. And then, truthfully, when they attack council, it irritates me because I point out to them that you were all elected fair and square. And I, they don't know who wanted you, but a bunch of people did. So we have to respect you and trust what your job is, I mean, until you prove otherwise, I guess. But if we don't do that, um, it's not going to work. So, um, and sometimes the threads get really ugly, so I just delete them. But I'm not here to ask any one of you to join my threads, I promise. Because um, people can't be really nice, and I don't think your duties as council people are to uh, be bullied or put in... Um, unconstructive or non-constructive conversations, just have you yelled at and all that. But what I am asking you is that you have more of a presence there by just posting things. And I'll give you some examples of what I think you could post. For example, next week, <coughs> Black Swamp Birding Observatory is having the trash pickup out on Route 2. Oh, sorry. Um, and even though it's not in Oregon, it's a really amazing thing. It's the biggest birding week in North America. And it's right here and 10 miles from us. So if we can't go pick up the trash, it would be nice if somebody or all of you mentioned what an amazing event that is. And just leave it at that. Uh, just let us know you're out here because that's one thing I get a lot from people is, I don't know them. Where are they? Um, they don't track you down like I do. <laughs> um, so something like that. Um, you can let them know it's a great thing. It's 10 minutes from Oregon. Uh, if they can't participate in that, it'd be great if we could get people to come out and clean up Navarre Avenue. This is a, There are hundreds of people from around the world coming down Navarre Avenue. You know, let's show them how nice we can be, how nice it can look. I know Kathy's the vice president of the Oregon Jerusalem Historical Society. She posts a lot about what they're doing. Well, when you guys attend those things, you could say, went to the genealogy class last night, and it was really fun. I learned my grandpa was, you know, whatever. Um, those kind of things that are not political or, oh, anybody will argue with you about it. But just let them know you do stuff, that you do other things and sit here, and they think you shuffle papers and use big words that they don't understand. Um and I, I thought of this, too. I, you don't have to mention business names, but I think it'd be helpful that somebody mentions that we have businesses here in Oregon that have been, they've made commitments to be sponsors of the Historical Society, which they really need. What's that? Okay, I'll be done in a second. Um, so it'd be good to know, like, we have, you could say something like, we have great sponsors because the Historical Society is a great place. Come over and, you know, uh, Memorial Day, we have the memorial for um, Jack Coy, who was a missing in action since World War II. Some of y'all, you should be saying, we're having this memorial thing. Hope to see y'all there. That's all you got to say. Um, 
And give a shout out to the kids at Clay. I go out, I was out there one day at the freight house when they all got out of school. And it was so fun because I butted in on their little group conversations. <laughs> I asked them all kinds of questions, what they thought about Clay, how old they were, where they were from. And it was really fun. I had a good conversation with them. Um, I made them laugh real hard when I told them I graduated from Clay almost 50 years ago. And then I knocked them out when I said, my classmates in the year before us pushed through the idea that we needed a student designated smoking area. I remember. remember that? <laughs> and those that kids were like, well. yeah, try to do that one today. Yeah, I know. These kids are just like, really? And uh, it was really fun. So there's nothing that says you guys can't go out there when they get off of school, go out there saying, I'm so and so. And they need to know what you do, that you represent them too, and listen to them and talk to them. You'll be amazed. They're, they're a lot of fun. So thanks a lot, everybody. I really do respect you all and I want to support you, but I also want you to show up. Let us know how fun Oregon is in your own personal opinions and such. And I'll be out there making sure people don't get really nasty because I delete the whole damn thing. if I can. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Carlette, thank you very much. Much appreciate your comments and, and what you do with the service to our community. I would tell you, uh, I think several of us probably read more than we write just for that simple fact. And most of us are getting phone calls, text messages, email messages. My wife would attest to, I don't get in and out of Kroger's in less than 30 to 40 minutes. Um, so we do try to make ourselves accessible as much as possible. It is another communication method. And we know that some people em embrace that as well. Under understand, understand, but appreciate the commentary and the sentiment to that. So thank you for being here tonight. Mr. President, Mr. Mayor, I'd just like to, to respond a little bit. And Kay and I did graduate together. Uh, I might look a lot older, but we are the same, same age. But uh, I will say, you you find sarcasm, nastiness, and negativity where I've been, I've been here thirty five years. I never never come to find it. <laughs> well, hearing that, we'll move on. Uh, first item on the agenda for consideration this evening is item sixty seven of twenty twenty four, and this will be presented by uh, City Administrator Joel Mazur. Mr. Mazur. Thank you, Mr. President. So uh, we talked about this agreement at length at our uh, committee meeting that we just had starting at six o'clock. Uh, I don't have anything to add to this, um, just that uh, we are seeking passage and I wanted to reiterate what Mr. Denman said uh, earlier is that uh, now the timing is, is good uh, for, for this and for him to get started, him and his team. And I know Bill Bassman is here sitting next to him, who's his uh, business partner. So had to call you out, couldn't let you off the hook. Uh, but thanks for being here. Really appreciate you guys um, taking the time and working through this agreement. And uh, we're really looking forward to getting a, a solid project uh, at the town center site. So that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Mazur. And I just uh, I just echo the excitement of the opportunity moving forward, uh, having chance to met, meet uh, the individuals involved. And I think this puts us on a right path. It's a pivot, but I believe it's a very good pivot for us as a community. That said, Council, any questions on item 67 of 2024? Hearing none, I'll seek a motion to move item 67 of 2024 to next week's agenda. I make a motion we move. This is my first time. I make yeah. a motion that we move item 667 to next week's agenda. Thank you, Mr. Ackerman. Second. Seconded by Mr. Wallenzak. We have a motion by Mrs. Ackerman, a second by Mr. Wallenzak to move item 67 of 2024 to next week's agenda. Councilor, are there any objections? Hearing none, item 67 is moved to next week's agenda. Next item on the agenda for this evening, presented by Mayor Michael Safarian and Finance Director Nick Roman, uh, and we'll go to Mr. Roman, item 68. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, this item would be the ordinance determining to proceed with the uh, sanitary sewer installation on Brown Road. Um, we came here for the resolution of necessity um, and then sent out estimates to all the property owners that would be a part of this improvement. Um, we received uh, all of the certified mail uh, notifications back and there were no objections to this project. Um, when we met with them in person, they were all seemed excited for this project to move forward. Um, so if this is passed, it would move on to uh, advertising for bids and uh, accepting bids from there. If there's any questions, please let me know. Thank you. 
Very good. Thank you, Mr. Roman. And I believe this is the next step in that process, which was petitioned by the property owners Correct. with an affirmative majority to do so. Correct. Very good. Council, any questions? Hearing none, I will seek a motion to move item 68 of 2024 to next week's agenda. Mr. President. Mr. Salander. I'd like to make a motion to move item number 68 of 2024 to next week's agenda. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Salander. Second. Seconded by Mr. Drake. We have a motion by Mr. Salander, second by Mr. Drake to move item 68 of 2024 to next week's agenda. Councilor, are there any objections? Hearing none, item 68 is moved to next week's agenda. Item 69 on this evening's agenda, presented by Mayor Michael Safarian and Parks and Recre Recreation Director, Commissioner, excuse me, Tim Borton. Uh, Tim, we'll go to you on item 69. Thank you, Mr. President. This is just our continuing project working towards the pickleball courts that were approved in the capital improvement budget. This is for the fencing that would go around the court. Uh, we did seek bids and Marlo Hercules was the lowest best bid. Um, so we're just moving forward with uh, accepting that bid so we can keep that work moving forward. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Borton. Council, any questions? Mr. President. Mr. Drake. Um, uh, this isn't for Mr. Borton. Um, I meant to talk to Paul early about it, but we were uh, busy. Uh, Mr. Roman, um, I've been by uh, Willow Cemetery numerous times, and that fence was tore down, and I was just curious if... Go ahead, I'd Mr. Have, Roman. What? No, uh, Mr. Drake, I had the same. I've, I've gone to Keith Henninger. I know he's getting quotes to fix that, but yeah, I I've, I've drive by it all the time, and it bothers me, so I, I do want to get that fixed soon, sooner. Okay, and especially yep. what uh, Kay uh, mentioned, I know Mr. Coy is going to be there, and he's actually in that section, I believe, yeah. where he's going to be buried, and I believe yep. there'll be a lot of people. So. That's correct. I think Keith may have quotes already, but that that was bothering me because okay. I've seen it like that for a little while. All right, thank you. Yep. We're good. Thank you, Mr. Drake. Council, any additional questions on item 69? Hearing none, I will seek a motion to move item 69 of 2024 to next week's agenda. Mr. President. Mr. Reeves. <clears throat> I move to uh, place item 69 of 2024 on next week's um, meeting agenda. Thank you, Mr. Reeves. Second. Seconded by Mr. Drake. We have a motion by Mr. Reeves, a second by Mr. Drake to move item 69 <clears throat> 2024 to next week's agenda. Counselor, are there any objections? Hearing none, item 69 has moved to next week's agenda. Item 70 of 2024, again, we'll go to Mr. Borton. Thank you, Mr. President. This is just the process of finalizing the new concession stand um, restroom building. We just have to repair and re-asphalt some areas around that. Again, we sought bids and the Bowers asphalt was the lowest best bid to move forward with kind of completing that project and getting it back to an easier user-friendly area. Thank you, Mr. Borton. Council, any questions? Thank you. Hearing none, I will ask for a motion to move item 70, 2024 to next week's agenda. Mr. President. Mr. Reeves. I move to uh, have item 70 of 2024 um, placed on next week's agenda meeting. Thank you, Mr. Reeves. Second. Second by Mr. Drake. We have a motion by Mr. Reeves, second by Mr. Drake to move item 70 of 2024 to next week's agenda. Councilor, are there any objections? Hearing nine, item 70 is moved to next week's agenda. Moving on is item 71, and again by Mr. Borton. Thank you, Mr. President. This is the final change orders for both the projects, the restroom and concession stand and the press box. Um, a lot of these are electrical in nature because as we started digging, we kept either finding electrical that we weren't aware of, or we had to move things around to kind of accommodate and recharge things. Uh, so a lot of these items are electrical replacement. Uh, the restroom, family restroom, we wanted an internal uh, deadbolt so they can lock it with their inside of there and then an external key. Um, the press box locker room privacy wall, that was when we had a building inspection. Since we were using that as a locker room slash storage, we needed a some type of privacy to protect the individuals inside the locker room. That is actually agreed upon. It's $5,488. The Clay High School baseball team is paying half of that cost, uh, but we have to appropriate that here. So these are just kind of the last wrap up of uh, change orders to complete that project. 
Very good. Thank you, Mr. Porton. Council, any questions for Mr. Porton? Hearing none, I'll seek a motion to Mr. move Mr. item Porton. 71. Of 20, oh, I'm sorry. Say, Mr. Walzak, please variation go right ahead. On this. Um, scoreboards i know you severed a line that serviced the scoreboards did we find the line and is it repaired we found the line it is in the process of being repaired we hope to have that charged up by next monday for the the press box grand opening perfect thank you yep thank you mr wall zach thank you mr borden uh council coming back any other questions hearing none i will seek a motion to move item 71 of 2024 to next week's agenda Mr. President. Mr. Reeves. I move to place item 71 of 2024 on next week's meeting agenda. Thank you, Mr. Reeves. Second. Thank you, Mr. Drake. We have a motion by Mr. Reeves, a second by Mr. Drake. Council, are there any objections to moving item 71 of 2024 to next week's agenda? Hearing none, item 71 is moved. Next item on our agenda is item 72, presented by Mayor Michael Safarian and Public Service Director Paul Roman. And Paul, we'll go to you on this. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Um, this uh, ordinance is needed to issue a purchase order to Warren Key Enterprises to place decorative landscape stone in the median areas of Novara Avenue. Um, the exact locations are shown in the exhibit, uh, and as well as the exact scope of work is in Exhibit A. Um, the uh, work does include removal of mulch and includes adding a, a, a true commercial weed uh, barrier with plantings. Um, I think all of you, we've talked about this in the past, the mulch is not an effective weed barrier. It's actually caught on fire a couple times, unfortunately, uh, and you would never think that, but it has. So um, and we've talked about it at in length at budget, and uh, this is just following through on that. Now, some people have asked, you know, can you could you fill it in with concrete? The problem is those those planting areas were like the, the bottom of the bowl, and the concrete that is there now uh, drains into it. So, if you were to make that, if you were to fill it in as concrete, you'd have to redo all of that concrete to make the drainage work. So, this is probably the best in between alternative. Um, it'll it, the rock is the uh, the color and the, the shape of it is all around the back of our buildings here. It does look very nice. Um, and I think Warren Key would do an excellent job. We did receive three quotes. They were the lowest and best bid. And um, that's it. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Roman. Council, any questions on item 72? Mr. President. Mr. Drake. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Roman, um, I see that there's going to be some plannings in there, and they, they spelled out some of them. Yeah. Um, you said there's not going to be mulch. So I'm assuming it mentioned they're going to have that fabric down. Correct. Do you know if it's fireproof or? <laughs> well, I, why the go rock ahead. is. I go ahead, Mr. That. Roman. I mean, the rock is, and I, I, I don't, it, it's a good question, but I do know the, the rock obviously will be, you know, and I think that is the idea, but I can ask that. Okay. I, I did do a little research in today on that fabric. And I never used it because when I used it after a couple of years, get dirt on top. dirt gets on it, and then eventually things grow. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think you'll still have some maintenance with it, but nowhere near what we do now. I mean, it's you, you, you've 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 called me, and I've had the same issues. Just crazy with the weeds that would grow in it, and uh, I think this would be way less maintenance. So, okay, and then there was one other thing. Um, I believe I talked to either you or Keith. I can mention him he's not here um it was last year there's when you're heading east on route two the corner of wheeling you're in that left turn lane yeah you have that pink rose bush yeah. which is beautiful i have nothing against it yeah but it's blocking that probably that stone. eight thousand dollar stone yeah so i didn't know if there's any way you could move it ask or have Keith or you ask Warnke if they could replant that. Yeah, could ask that. I agree. I, I do like the stone. I think it is very attractive. And is it like a river rock? Yeah, it's the, the, the type of rock. I think it gives the name actually in. It does. Uh, somewhere in there. Large Merrimack. It come up. But it's out right out back. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. actually open the windows. You can see it. Uh, the stone. All right. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Drake. Council, any additional questions on item 72? Hearing none, I'll seek a motion to move item 72 to next week. President Hornyak. Yes. 
I noticed the ones like there is an issue with five of them. I do yeah. know that. Yeah. And Keith, yeah, Keith Henninger is working on that. Yeah. It wasn't me, but it was Keith Henninger working on that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you. Council, any additional questions on item 72? Hearing none, I'll seek a motion to move item 72 to next week's agenda. Mr. President. Mr. Walnzak. Thank you, Mr. President. I make a motion to move item number 72 of 2024 to next week's regular meeting agenda. Thank you, Mr. Walnzak. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Pollock. We have a motion by Mr. Walensack, a second by Mrs. Pollock to move 72, item 72 of 2024 next week's agenda. Council, is there any objection? Hearing none, item 72 is moved to next week's agenda. Moving on, item 73, and again, we'll go back to Mr. Roman. Mr. Roman. Um, thank you, Mr. President. This uh, item, this, this ordinance is needed to conduct feasibility study and preliminary design for the water treatment plant expansion. I've talked about this several times in past budgets. Um, to some extent, I'm, I'm glad I, I, uh, we waited, um, but at the same time, I think it is something we need to go forward with. And um, so, so certainly I had money in the budget. Um, this is higher than what, what I had planned for, but at the same time, it was an arbitrary uh, assumption as to what that budget number would be. Um, and I think everything that's listed in the scope of services we need um, I did uh, ask Mr. Sandler to have a committee meeting next week, and uh, but I did want to go through this just a little bit, um, just to give a, a first um, uh, overview of it. Um, we did receive three qualification statements, and Arcadis uh, was uh, determined to be the most qualified. Uh, uh, myself, Doug Wagner, and Steve Gutenkunz all did those reviews, and certainly Arcadis. Um, they did our, our plan expansion about 25 years ago, and uh, they've done the uh, Longdorf uh, storage tank. They've done a trunk main projects. They've done ozone. Uh, they clearly know our, our plant the best, and they're certainly involved with a lot of newer uh, water treatment plant designs. So we definitely felt they were most qualified. My biggest concerns for a feasibility study at this time is our peak demand has hit 13.5 million gallons per day. Our treatment capacity is 16. Uh, when you start getting within uh, one or two MGD of your design capacity, it is important to start planning how to expand. Um, I can tell you that just some of our existing industrial developments have used more water than what they originally planned for. Walleye Energy, it's a power plant. They, own, they, they pull in their own raw water, but they're using close to a million, uh, one MGD of water a day, which is, wasn't something you originally planned for. Uh, even the methanol plant and the current power plant uh, is usually more potable water. So um, in these years that are wet, your, your demand isn't as high, you know, from the residents. But in those dry uh, summers, the 13.5 was actually in 2020. And I think it's on quantity, it's, it's clearly something we need to start planning. On the quality side, though, and this is on treatment, you know, um, We've talked about operating in the past uh, about our chemicals being very high. Well, lime, lime softening is also a, a very high cost, not just purchasing the lime, but actually getting rid of the spent lime. Spent lime removal is literally uh, just over 1 million every year. It, it is a, a very high cost. So lime softening itself is a very high operating cost. One thing I think it's very important us to look at is the best technology to treat our water. I think that's important in all these, this study in particular. Um, but reverse osmosis is a technology that's out there. You're pressurizing the water through a, a very fine membrane filter. Um, it does, it removes minerals as well. Uh, uh, and when we talk about scale, which a lot of people have complained in the past, past years, um, we know there's general maintenance you need to do with your plumbing, but it does bother me too. I, I, I really want to know, is that something we have to live with or is there something better? Part of me wants to look for that. The reverse osmosis could take the place of lime softening. So even though it's a higher cost on electrical, the fact is you're, you're not buying as much lime and you're not dealing with the spent lime disposal. So that, that, that higher capital cost may off, be, may off, clearly offset our operating costs. I think that's something we need to look at. That's probably, and then simply looking at what degree of expansion we look at is a part of that analysis. So that's a big one. On raw water, I've talked about this in the past. 
Um, when we did our last expansion, we were okay with our current raw water pipeline, but we always knew that if we go to any more additional flow, we have to add a new raw water service line. Uh, literally six, seven years ago, we looked at that cost. It was about $9 million just to add a new raw water line. Um, I think it's something we still need to do, but Toledo's raw water lines go right across our water treatment plant. And I think one alternative look at, you could look at purchasing raw water from Toledo, but even as a minimum, I would like an emergency connection to the raw water. That is just plain redundancy. Uh, and, and, and in case something happened with our intake, having that connection, I think would be extremely valuable. But, and I've talked to Toledo to some degree about it. They are planning a third raw water line. And I, I wanted them to know that we have that interest. Um, that's certainly more that we need to talk about. That analysis is in here as well. And then on the distribution system, um, we've had requests simply in the past uh, couple of months from our outside customers looking for more water. Uh, Genoa, certainly one of them, Northwest Sewer District uh, as another. Um, and I think just the way things are growing inside the city, um, I think it, it is something that we have to look at. But getting the water to our outside customers is a part of this analysis. Our southwest quadrant of the city has low pressure. We've started the process of providing bigger trunk mains, but it's a question of how much more water do you provide to that area. TRC is a big refinery. They do use Toledo water, but they have come to us asking us, would it be possible to provide more water? I think that's something that's needed for us to look into. So those are some of the precursors. I'm certainly willing to provide a lot more information. I could talk about this subject all night if you wanted. Um, but I think uh, Nick's laughing. Um, <laughs> he gets it at home too. So um, I think that um, there's a lot to talk about. I'll have Doug Wagner and Jeff Swartz with Arcadis would be here at the meeting next week as well. So and I'll let Steve call that. But happy to answer any questions. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Rowan. Councilor, are there any questions on item 73? Mr. President. Ms. Paula. I do have a question for Mr. Rowan. Do we have any idea how much land is available over there for expansion? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, the mere image of what we have now could be all built to the west. So there's no doubt there's plenty of room. You actually, you could you can clearly go another 16 MGD with the land that we already own. So you could go from 16 now to 32 MGD. So we have with, without any new land purchases. Yes. There's no new land purchases. Nope. Okay, nope. Good. Nope. And we have the space out at low service pump station as well. Awesome. Thank you so yep. much. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Roman. Thank you, Ms. Pollock. Mr. President. Ms. Sackerman. Um, I, I, um, the Ohio Municipal League, they had a Zoom for that EPA announcement on PFAS on water quality, and I, I was riveting. And um, but it is concern. It really is really concerning. So could you address like for us like what yeah. it does? Do we test for that? Um, considering a lot of our water in Toledo's water is going through all this industrial area, is it a concern for us uh, moving forward? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, no, those are good questions, uh, Mrs. Ackerman. I think that um, PFAS, there is a new ruling. It's four parts per trillion. Um, when you ask about what does that mean, that's four blades of grass and seven football fields. But um, I, uh, the PFAS, the polyfluoroalkyls have, there's almost 200 chemicals with that arrangement. And no, the, the, the EPA's ruling is that you have to start testing by 27 and the, the limit will be four parts per trillion. And uh, reverse osmosis is one of the best treatment systems for PFAS. And that is, I'm glad you brought that up because that is one of the reasons I want to look at that technology as well. Um, no, I, th I think our area of the country has not had the same amount of PFAS as area, but it's interesting. It's in cosmetics. Uh, you know, it's in weatherproofing. Um, it's, there, there's a lot of different, and it, these chemicals don't go away. Um, all I can say is in Lake Erie, the water does uh, move through it in 120 days, uh, but you never know if there's some old landfill up in the upstream, uh, you know, areas of the lakes that could leach at some point. And, you know, I think it's, it's things that you do have to plan for. Uh, and that's part of this analysis. I think that's important to look at. Um, and I think just simply... Um, what is the best technology for the situations that we have now? That's what I want to look at. So that's part of this, not just an expansion. So 
Thank you. I didn't yeah. want to let Nick down. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Roman. Thank you, Mrs. Ackerman. Council, any additional questions on item 73? Mr. Slender, did you have nope. Okay. Anything from that end? Okay. Hearing nothing, I'll seek a motion to move item 73 of 2024 to next week's agenda. Mr. President. Mr. Slander. I'd like to make a motion to move item 73 of 2024 to next week's agenda. Thank you, Mr. Slander. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Pollock. We have a motion by Mr. Slander, a second by Mrs. Pollock to move item 73, 2024 to next week's agenda. Counselor, are there any objections? Hearing none, item 73 is moved to next week's agenda. Moving on, item 74 is a resolution for the safe routes to school. Uh, Mr. Romo, we'll go back to you, but this is something I know that council has done several times over the years, but I'll allow you to take us through it. Thank you. Yeah, and Mr. President, if you recall, this was, uh, we had a, uh, on the uh, council agenda probably a month ago or so, and mm -hmm. I, I uh, pulled it because it really wasn't ready yet, and uh, now it is. It's definitely in its final form, and um, I did ask Mrs. Rawson uh, to put it uh, on the city website as well so that you can see the full plan. There is a lot attached, but it's probably 70% of the full plan. Um, this resolution is simply needed to, support, to show the city support endorsement of a, of a 2024 Oregon school travel plan. The plan is an update of the city's plan that was originally conducted in 2008. If you turn to the second page, you'll see all the members involved, involved the police department, schools, uh, health department. Um, so, and, and I, I think, uh, um, it's really, uh, the intention is to really identify any improvements that will increase the awareness or safety uh, for children walking to and from school. Uh, the recommended improvements for each school when you, go in, when you get into the details, the either crossing improvements provide higher visibility or sidewalk or bike path uh, extensions to the school. Uh, and again, bulk of the plan is attached. Uh, each school has a listing of improvements. Uh, if you do look at the webs, uh, uh, the various Facebook sites uh, and people asking for sidewalks, you'll find that a lot of those sidewalks people are asking for are actually in this listing of what's recommended. So it's a good concurrence of, of what this group has done. Uh, and I, I certainly want to thank all of you who, who have attended the meetings. I also want to especially thank Mr. Drake, who, who not only attended the meetings, uh, he was a part of the walking audit. Uh, in creating this. So I do appreciate that, Mr. Drake, and, and you, giving your time for that. So again, happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Roman. Council, any questions? Hearing none, I'll seek a motion to move item 74 to next week's agenda. Mr. President. Mrs. Pollock. So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Pollock. Second. Seconded by Mr. Drake. Thank you, Mr. Drake. We have a motion by Mrs. Pollock, a second by Mr. Drake to move item 74 of 2024 to next week's agenda. Councilor, are there any objections? Hearing none, item 74 is moved to next week's agenda. And if you're hoping this is it, we have one more we'll talk about after 75. But item 75 of 2024, again presented by Mayor Michael Safarian, Public Service Director Paul Roman, Mr. Roman. Thank you, Mr. President. This resolution is needed also to show support or endorsement of Lucas County Solid Waste District's management plan. This is something they look forward to. Uh, look for from all the communities in Lucas County uh, when they do an updated plan. This plan goes out 15 years. Um, I did go through it in detail, um, but the plan itself is not attached. Just the summary is included here. Um, when you read through the district plan, it does encourage recycling. And uh, I know um, recycling has changed over the last so many years. A lot of people thought they were recycling and it really was, was going to a landfill in some cases. And uh, we called it wish cycling. But I, I think that the bigger news here is that the county is building a materials recovery facility that's called MRF. And uh, it will, uh, uh, you will not have to haul your recycling, you know, our or two hours away, it's something that's very close by. It will reduce the cost of recycling. It is a question of what do we do in the future? Um, our bid is up this year for uh, refuse collection and um, the MRF won't be ready till 2026, but we, I think we wanna write that contract just to get a bid for perhaps curbside recycling and include it as, as if the MRF occurs and is built in 26, what would the prices be for that? It's something to consider. You could still keep it a five-year contract. 
but actually in the middle of that contract, you could ask, ask recycling if you so chose to do that. Uh, it might be hard for them to bid at this time. Maybe you, you, you try to get those bids up now up, up front this fall. Uh, if, if you don't get much in two years, you could still bid curbside recycling as its own contract if you wish. So it's something can be done. One thing that's interesting, the EPA does encourage recycling about 25% of your waste. Currently, the county is at 35%, which is pretty good. That's And we still have our, our drop-off sites. We have our four sites. And I can tell you that when you talk to the, to the county, um, the way our, we do it with drop-off, uh, the people who are doing the drop-off are very conscientious people. Um, they are not finding much waste product in that recycling. They're not finding the, the contaminant. And I would argue that the drop-off sites do work. But it is a question uh, to return to curbside. And to me, it is a cost. And I think you need to ensure that it is truly being recycled. Uh, and uh, even what products do you recycle? That's changed a little bit. Um, I think the refuse contract, uh, we're have to gonna really think about whether you want unlimited refuse versus limited uh, with cans. Uh, I think it's something we need to consider as well. Uh, but I've gone through this plan. It doesn't, in terms of, they have their, their cost per ton that they collect automatically from any waste hauler uh, for uh, funding their operation. Uh, they, the county also has a $5 that they charge per improved parcel. That's not changing as a part of this. So there's really no changes cost to us. Um, it just explains what their goals are and what they're shooting for. But the bigger news is that they are actually building a MRF. That's been talked about for 20 years. And they got a big grant to do it. They got a brownfield that they're doing it at. And uh, it's good news for the area. I think that, that it will improve on recycling. So that's it. Thank you, Mr. Roman. Council, any questions? Hearing none, we'll seek a motion to move item 75 to next week's agenda. Mr. President. Mr. Wallenzak. Thank you, Mr. President. I make a motion to move item number 75. 2024 to next week's regular meeting agenda. Thank you, Mr. Wallenzak. Second. Second by Mr. Drake. We have a motion by Mr. Wallenzak, a second by Mr. Drake to move item 75 to next week's agenda. Counselor, are there any objections? Hearing none, item 75 is moved to next week's agenda. Council, we have one additional item uh, which did not make the publication of your agenda books um, as of Friday but it is something we will look to add to the agenda for next week. So in essence, we will, as we call it, walk it on for next week. However, the opportunity is to discuss it and ask some questions today. Uh, and I'll turn it over to Chief Began to present the item. You should have copies in front of you. Uh, it's about the ACHIEVE program. And with that, I'll turn it over to our Police Chief, Brandon Bean. Chief. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we are looking to enter into an agreement with Mrs. Tina Miller. Uh, she is an Oregon resident. Uh, as many of you should know, um, Renee Jardy, who was with our department for 16 years, retired in March, a little earlier than we expected. Um, so the, the program has been um, somewhat on hold, but also being filled in by the sergeant who oversees the program. Uh, so we're still doing some stuff with it, but we want to get back to a uh, normal, full caseload with that. So everybody who's been coming in, or is in the middle of the ACHIEVE program has kind of um, slowed down the process a little bit and we wanna get back to that. Uh, so we did put it out. Um, we received multiple applications. We did interviews uh, and Mrs. Tina Miller seems like she is the best fit. Uh, she is an Oregon resident. I think she's gonna be great for the program and kind of bring uh, her own ideas to it. Um, and just a general overview of what ACHIEVE is. It is the Oregon Police Division's uh, juvenile diversion program. So if somebody uh, under the age of 18 commits a crime, uh, if it's nonviolent, if it's their first offense, um, they would qualify uh, to be put into the juvenile diversion program. They go through the program. Uh, it includes their parents or guardians, and there's multiple steps to it. And it's kind of a rehabilitation uh, type of thing. And they have to do a lot to pass it. And if they, if they make it through and graduate from achieve, then there are no criminal child, uh, criminal charges filed on them. So we think it's a great program. Uh, we put, um, many kids through each year, um, and the recidivism rate rates are very low. 
for those offenders who do go through and complete the program. Um, when Renee Jardy was here over her 16 years, she worked with 780 juveniles and had approximately 95% success rate. Uh, so we're very proud of that. We want to keep it up. We think it's a great thing for the uh, youth of our community. And um, this ordinance is to enter into the agreement, uh, standard agreement that we've done with Renee Jardy in the past. Um, so we're looking to have her start as quickly as possible. Um, it is time sensitive, so we are going to uh, bring it forward as a emergency measure. Uh, she is standing by um, to make sure that everything passes before she gives her two-week notice to her current employer. Um, and we would like to have her start two weeks from the date of passage on this. So that's why it would be an emergency measure. So thank you. Happy to answer any questions. Very good. Thank you, Chief Beacon. Council, any questions? Thank you again. No actions taken on that tonight. We'll present it uh, for consideration and passage at our regular meeting one week from today. But just wanted to give the opportunity in case there were questions or information. Chief Beacon, thank you very much for presenting the information. With all the items on our agenda considered, we'll move on to reports. We'll start with the mayor's report. <coughs> Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President, but I have no report. Excuse me. Real quick, did that need to be moved to next week? No. Okay. No, it is not being presented to forward to the agenda. It'll be walked on next week since we okay. didn't have it ready to consider the item number. We'll just add it into next week afterwards. Got it. We Thank thought you. that would be the easiest method. Thank you. Sorry about that. Thank you. Go ahead, Mayor. I'm sorry. No, no report. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Mazur. No report, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Mazur. Ms. Papora. No report, Mr. President. Thank you, Ms. Papora. Mr. Roman. Uh, just one item, Mr. President. We are planning a public open house this Thursday in this room at 6 p.m. Uh, for the Otter Creek Stream and Floodplain Restoration uh, Project. Uh, this is the area uh, actually by Taylor Street uh, on, on Otter Creek and Trailer and, and Yarrow. And um, so just, I know you, we sent a notice out to you guys, but I just want to make that public announcement. That's it. Thanks. Bye. Much appreciated. Thank you, Mr. Roman. Mr. Reeves. No report, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Reeves. Ms. Paul. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. President. I would um, like to thank the chiefs for their, um, for really, I mean, you guys got behind the ball and really got every, all your information together. Um, the information that we had given, it contains everything to that, that describes um, what we're looking at with the levy. And I so appreciate all your guys' work and all the phone calls that I've made to you. Um, secondly, I would like to give a shout out for um, our dispatchers, National um, Public Safety Com Telecommunications Week is this week, April 14th through April 20th. And we really do have to give kudos to our responders because they're the point of contact when things that are bad happen. So I would love to give um, a great shout out to our, our dispatchers that answer our call. And, and lastly, you're right, I should have said point of order with that. <laughs> I automatically shouted that out and I know I shouldn't have. And that's all, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Poff. Mr. Wallenzak. Thank you, Mr. President, no report this evening. Thank you, Mr. Wallenzak. Ms. Zackerman. Um, Mr. Roman covered the, the meeting on th Thursday night at six o'clock. Correct? Okay. That. And I'm looking forward to Tree City USA, and I know several people are going, so I think uh, hopefully we bring back a lot of enthusiasm. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Zachary. Mr. Slander. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Mr. President. Um, for my standing committee of the water, as um, Mr. Roman there had alluded to, we will be calling a committee meeting next Monday, which will be April 22nd at 6 p.m., uh, discussing the um, basically that item 73. So um, that's all I have for my committee. And I just wanted to echo Ms. Paloff's uh, kudos to the dispatchers. Uh, we very, very, very much do appreciate you. You're, you're, uh, you're there on the, on our worst days and, you, and you're the angel on the shoulders of our, our responders as well. So very much appreciate it. Uh, and okay, thank you so much for coming out here today. And I, I see your, your cheerleading out there on, on the social media, and I appreciate it, too. And I know we've gotten a chance to, to a few times to, to clean up some trash over out of the creek. So I appreciate you doing that, too. we got to have some good conversation as well. So thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Slander. Mr. Drake. No report. Uh, just a question for Kay. Kay, do you have an extra cigarette I can have for after the meeting? <laughs> All right. Thank you. 
Thanks, Steve. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Drake. Um, from my standing committee, I want to thank everybody for their participation and their attendance tonight at the Economic Development Committee meeting. Uh, a lot of topics covered very quickly, uh, but things that are coming down the pike and, and coming at us fast and furious. So we do appreciate everybody's willingness to be here walking through it. Thanks to Mr. Mazur and Mr. Schrake, who really did a great job with pulling a lot of that information forward. Uh, so do appreciate everybody with that. Um, Couple of things I just wanted to kind of put out more announcement, more so than anything else. One, there was a question last week in regards to Robert's rules, amendments, things of that nature. Um, I think several of us did a lot of research into that. In an official regular meeting, there does have to be a motion to pose an amendment at an agenda committee of the whole. As we are today, the presenter can make a change to that before it is forwarded on. Um, so there are multiple things. So based on that, in case you haven't looked in front of you, I put little cheat sheets in front of you. If all council members, everybody up here would like these, they're like six bucks. I bought a few of them online, sprinkled them around the table. It's got everything you want to know about Robert's Rules of Orders in about six pages. So it's an opportunity to have it there and some other cheat sheets that are there. Um, so again, we'll put that out there because one of the things that did come up last week is the question that was asked came from the audience and those questions really should be coming from ourselves. So again, this is just an opportunity for us to, to arm ourselves with information and facts as we go. Um, the other thing, as we saw tonight, in some of the committee meetings, it does get tight for time. So I would just encourage each of the different committee chairmen or chairpersons, uh, make sure you're considering public participation in your meetings, how that works, how that times in. Um, as you see, sometimes those agendas get very full and there may or may not be available time to do those. Um, so I would just, as you're calling your meetings, think through that decision before you get there of how you want to handle that, just to make sure that you give yourself enough time and planning. I think it works well either way. Again, depending on the agenda, it's a consideration to think about as we move forward. Okay. And Mr. with that, Mr. President, I was just going to say one thing. Okay. Um, and it goes back to UK. When the, when the smoke, and Mr. Craig wants to have a cigarette with you, <laughs> but uh, when the smoking ban or, or when the smoking, um, what do they call it, the smoking area? Oh, yeah. Designated, Designated smoking area. area. Wasn't it by the second day there was the aroma of marijuana yes. there? By the <laughs> second day. Oh, yeah. I'll go on record to say I've never smoked a cigarette in my life. <laughs> but plenty did. I, I think somebody could move to adjourn now. Good. From there, folks, uh, I'm beating an hour by a minute, so we're getting back on track. I will seek a motion to adjourn. So moved, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Reeser. We have a second. Second, second by Mr. Slander. Any objections? Meeting is adjourned.